Hello y'all. Today will be another video. It's now time for a second video about Paul Powell. The guy who was incredibly sick and terminally stupid. I'm going to read his letters. The first of which was addressed to the prosecutor, to his prosecutor, Mr. Uh, Paul Ebert, on October 21st, 2001. Okay, without further ado, let's get to it. Mr. Ebert, since I have already been indicted on first-degree murder and, this, and the Virginia Supreme Court says I can't be charged with capital murder again, I figured I would tell you what happened. I figured I would tell you the rest of what happened on January 29th, 1999. To show y'all how stupid y'all motherfuckers are. Y'all should have known that there was more to the story than what I told you, what I told you by what I said. You had it in writing that I had planned to kill the whole family. Since I planned to kill the whole family, why would I have fought with Stacy before killing her? She had no idea what I was planning. I, what, I was planning to kill everybody, and talked and carried, and talked and carried on like usual, so I could have stabbed her up at any time because she was unsuspecting. I had other plans for her before she died. You know I came back to the house after Bobby's lunch break and was over and had went back to work. When I got back, she was on the phone and I went inside and laid on the couch. When the cab came to bring me my pager, I ran outside of the house and she jumped off the phone and came back to the porch, which is why I ran out of the house like I did to see why I ran out of the house like I did. When the cab left, <clears throat> we went home and I laid on the couch again and she was up in her room getting her and got her clothes and went downstairs to do her laundry. When she was downstairs, I got up and shut the locked door, shut and locked the door and went downstairs. We had talked while she put her clothes in the wash. We continued talking and she had sit she said she had everything in the wash. I reached over and touched her tit and asked her to see it and asked her if she wanted to fuck. She said no because she had a boyfriend. I started arguing with her because she never turned down anybody because she had a boyfriend. We started walking upstairs arguing the whole time and when we got upstairs she she went into her room and turned the radio off. After I, after she turned the radio off I pushed her onto the, to the bed, grabbed her wrists and pinned her down by her head and sat on top of her. I told her that I wanted to, all I wanted to do was fuck her and I would leave and we could do this the easy way or the hard way. She said she, she would fuck me so I got up. After I got up we started fighting and she clawed me in the face. We wrestled a little and then I slammed her on the floor. She hit the floor. When she hit the floor I sat on top of her and pinned her, her hands down again. She said she would fuck me, and I told her if she tried fighting with me again, I would kill her. When I got up, she she stood up and asked me why I was doing doing all of this, and I kept saying, "Take off your clothes." Finally, she undid her pants and pulled them down to her ankles. She was ready to take them the rest of the way off when the phone rang. She heard the phone, grabbed her pants, and pulled them back on. She had to answer the phone. I pushed her back and said no. She said that she wouldn't s say anything about me being there, and I told her no, and to take her clothes off. She tried to get out of the room again. I pushed her back and pulled out my knife. I guess she thought I was trying to scare her and that I wouldn't really stab her because she tried to leave again. When she got me and tried to squeeze the door, I stabbed her. When I stabbed her, she fell back against the door and told me to look, or told me, and just looked at me with a shocked look look on, my, on her face. When I pulled the knife out, she slumped back a couple of steps and, uh, and fell into her sister's room. I walked over, looked at her, and saw that she was still breathing. I stepped on her body, over her body, and looked, looked, and looked and into the bedroom. I then put my foot on her throat and stepped 
on it so she couldn't breathe. Then I started stepping down and stomping on her throat. Then I just stepped back onto her throat and moved up and down, putting pressure to make it harder for her to breathe. When I didn't see she was breathing anymore, I left the room, had some iced tea, and smoked a cigarette. You know the rest of what happened after that point. I would like to thank you for saving my life. I know you're probably wondering how you saved my life, so I will tell you. You saved it by fucking up. There were two main fuck-ups you made that saved me. The first, or first was the way you murdered, worded my capital murder indictment. The second was the comment that made you made in the closing of your argument, which said you didn't, you won't know because you won't tell us. One more time, thank you. Now you know everything that happened in that house on bloody bloody blah. The address on January 29th, 1999. I forgot to mention these events when I was being questioned. Haha, <laughs> psych. I knew that y'all would be, would be able to prove it in court. What y'all would be able to prove in court. So I told you what you already knew. That Stacy was dead and no one else was in the house. I knew y'all would never have, would never know everything and she went through unless she came back to life. Since the Supreme Court says I can't be charged with capital murder again, I could tell you what I just told you because I no longer have to worry about the death penalty. And y'all are supposed to be so goddamn smart. I can't believe y'all y'all thought I told you everything. Well, it's too late now. Nothing can be done. So you can go fuck off, you fat, cock-sucking, cum-guzzling gutter slut. I guess I'll see your bitch ass on December. 18th at, at trial because I'm not pleading to shit. Tell the family to be ready to testify and relive it all over again because if I had to suffer for the next 50 or 60 years or however long, then they can suffer the torment of reliving what happened for a couple of days. I'm gone. Fuck you and f fuck you and anyone that associates with, with people like you. Well, oh, wait, I'm gone. Fuck you, fuck anyone like you, or, or uh, that associates with people like you. I almost forgot. Fuck your God, too. Jesus knows how to suck a dick really good. Did you teach him? We'll die a slow, painful, miserable death. See you, punk. See ya, punk. Don't you just hate yourself for being so stupid and for fucking up and saving me? Sincerely, Paul Powell. Uh, that wasn't all. He also wrote this little gem. Laureen, the girl, Stacy's mother... I was wondering if you might be able to, to help me think of something. I found this picture in a magazine. It kind of looks like someone I know or used to know. I can't, but I can't think of the person's name. I think you know that the person, this person, the person too. I was wondering if you could tell me the name of this person. This picture resembles, but I can't quite racking my brain trying to think of it. I would really appreciate it if you don't know who I'm talking about. Ask Chrissy or, Kel or Kelly Rich Welch, because I know they they know who I am thinking about. Of. If you were if you were to talk to this person I'm talking about, please give her my address and tell her to write me. Um. <clears throat> anyway, he wrote a letter to a friend also while incarcerated. About the time you asked me what I would or wouldn't do, do what I did did to Stacy. I couldn't hurt, couldn't e ever hurt you because you meant, mean so much to me. Since they, see, Stacy didn't mean anything to me. She was a nigger lover. And some of her wannabe skinhead friends were supposed to kill me. That's part of the reason why she died. Almost everything that happened in that house was planned. The only thing that wasn't planned was trying to fuck Chrissy. What was supposed to happen was Stacy was supposed to die and, and did. Crazy Chrissy was supposed to die, and then I was going to wait for her mom and stepdad to get to get home, and I was going to kill them. Then I was going to take their mom's truck, and then I was going to go going to go to North Carolina to knock this dude off who stole all my clothes and everything else I owned. I've been thinking about doing this for a long time, but I could never quite bring myself to do it. I don't know what what happened to make me to make me finally do it. I feel bad for doing it. Stacy was a good kid. Paul wrote in another letter to 
his uh, girl to like I guess his girlfriend. Hey babe, what's happening? Not much, not too much here. I was writing you to see if you could get this one guy, one of your guy friends, to do me a favor. You know that Chrissy is telling the cops the things, cops things, and that she is going to testify against me in court. I was wondering if you could get somebody to go to a payphone and call Chrissy and tell her that she better stop telling the cops, start telling the, co the cops that she lied to them, and tell her she better not testify against me or she's going to die. And I'm not, and finally we have this little gem, uh, Fat Ebert, the prosecutor. What's up, you fat head fucker? I'm writing, I'm writing to tell you that since you want to kill me so goddamn bad for killing your nigger-loving whore, set up the court date closer than October 25th so that I can go ahead and get all this bullshit over with and plead guilty so you can kill me and get it over with unless you want, want, want to let me out so I can kill the rest of the nigger lovers and all the and all the niggers, spit Jews, spicks, and everybody else in this fucked up country that's not white. That includes you, because you are a nigger loving Jewish fucking faggot. I will see you in hell, bitch. Your buddy, Paul Powell. P.S. Watch your back. As we can see, he has a big mouth, a sick mind, and a very dumb mind. But anyway, he is obviously an emotional sadist who likes to not only physically torture people, but emotionally torture them as well. And his emotional sadism led, to the, led him straight to the electric chair. I thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and if you can, leave a donation. It's for a good cause. See y'all next time. Bye.